Good morning, everyone. My name is Huda Al Hassani, a lecturer at Department of English, College of Arts, University of Mosul. I'm pleased to participate in the 10th International Multidisciplinary Conference on Current Research Trend 2024. My participation will be through a research paper entitled Cyborg Feminism, Gender Identity in Film and Fiction. Well, my presentation will include the following. Aims, study question, the cyborg, cyborg feminism, gender identity in film, a case study, FIX, LMD, A giga, gender identity in fiction, a case study, Carter's short story, The Tiger's Pride. And I will end with the conclusions. Now I will start with aims and a study question. The main aim of this paper is that it examines how cinematic and fictional representations of the cyborg can re or deconstruct gender identity through the interaction between culture technology, and male or female identity. The study question then is, what does it mean to be male or female in a world in which body parts are interchangeable? Above all, I will start with the cyborg, its definition according to Donna Harway. Well, a cyborg can be best defined according to Donna Hardway's seminal work, A Cyborg Manifesto, Science, Technology, and Socialist Feminism in the Late 20th Century. She defined a cyborg as a metaphor to a form of subjectivity to reveal the dichotomies between mind and body animal and human, organism and machine, public and private, nature and culture, men and women, primitive and civilized are all in question ideologically. From this, I will look at cyborg feminism, definitions and theory. General speaking, feminist Use the cyborg as theatrical model to interpret the representations of gender by identifying ways traditional gender roles, I would say, are de or reconstructed through the cyborg subject. From this, Balazamo argues cyborg bodies are definitionally transgressive of a dominant cultural order not so much because of their constructed nature, but rather because of the indeterminacy of their hybrid design. The cyber provides a framework for studying gender identity as it is technologically crafted simultaneously from the matter of material bodies and cultural fictions. According to Haraway, the cyborg is a cybernetic organism, a creature of social reality as well as a creature of fiction. So by studying cyborg and cyborg feminism, we can investigate gender identity and rejecting that the essentialist concepts of identity as stable or natural. And instead, identity, society, and technology co-constitute each other and as such, exist always in a constant state of transition. Now I will tackle the representations of gender identity in film and fiction, a case study that shows the male cyborg and the female cyborg. First of all, I will tackle the Egyptian comedian movie by Ashraf Fayyad and Limbi Gega. Then I will tackle the short story, The Tiger's Pride, by the British writer Angela Carter. Now, 
I will tackle gender identity in film in order to reveal the male cyborg in Ashraf Fayek's comedian movie, Alim B. 8 Giga. Through his movie, he reveals such a kind of male cyborg through his protagonist, Limby, whose gender identity firstly is deconstructed and then uh, reconstructed by placing a metal chip in his arm in order to enhance his mind through technology, and that transforms him into a hybrid human machine, mind, body, cyborg. Regarding this, and Limbi's masculinity and male identity are deconstructed at first. How? Well, and Limbi is a poor and successful lawyer, the sister from the lower class, who marries a limited educated private teacher. Due to his poor financial circumstances and unsuccessful career, he is led into limited income, which did not meet the simplest requirements of life. In addition of the lacking of children, that leads to rather unhappy marriage. His male identity and masculinity as a man is weakened and deconstructed because, according to Michael Kimmel, a model of manhood that derives identity entirely from a man's activities in the public sphere, measured by accumulated wealth and status, by geographical and social mobility. Yet, and what increased LMBs and his wife's Awareness of their problems was his wife's sister, who was married to a rich man from the Gulf, so they had money and children. They always brag about this in front of a Limby and his wife, and this absolutely weakens and degrades his sense of subjectivity and male identity in front of himself and his wife. As a consequence, Alimbi rebels against his deconstructed masculinity by pretending to be important man in front of people. So he forged a lawyer's card and accidentally seen by a man called Saidi Wahdan. So he asked him to defend his murderer son instead of the lawyer who had an accident. And when Alimbi Try to escape, Wahdan and his men force him to stand before the judge, ask for postponement. Thereby, Alimbi stole 5,000 pounds and fled. Because of this, Alimbi does solve some of his financial problems and he fulfills some of his wife's needs. And while buying a new bed, he slips on a banana peel fell on his head and lost consciousness. Suddenly, he discovers that a week has passed and he does not remember anything of it. Thereby, his new male cyborg that is separate between human and machine is started. When a Dr. Ahmed Shawaf A neurologist treats him, telling him that some abnormality has occurred in the brain's signals, which made him not remember anything from the recent past. So he placed a metal chip in the nerve of his arm, thereby brain signals are controlled. And he developed that chip to regulate thinking and electrify the brain, and through it, a large amount of information can be downloaded. Thereby, he downloaded the civil registry files so that if he looks at any person, he knows all the information about him or her. And he also provided him with some information, legal information and general information from the famous Windows website. Thus, and because of the metal chip, 
and Limby is able to reconstruct his male identity and gender role in patriarchal society. With his new male cyborg identity, he becomes liberated and is able to be a successful lawyer and win cases using the information stored with him. He gains money, power, and becomes a decisive man with important social role, though he still lacks children. For Kimmel, autonomy and freedom are key elements which are a central part of what is to be a man. Being a man meant being in charge of one's one life, liberty and property, as well as being independent, self-controlled and responsible. Consequently, Josephine Sorbrick finds that when men do not possess control over their own body and agency in the public sphere, they are seen to fail to perform the hegemonic masculinity proposed by Kimmel and, I would say, the patriarchal gender roles. Thus, this film, Olympiad Gega, highlights of what Sorbrick puts it as men and anxiety is relating to the embodiment of socially accepted normative masculinity in the contemporary landscape of increased mechanization, economic inequality, and corporate dominance. Now, I will move on to tackle gender identity in fiction in order to reveal the female cyborg in Angela Kato's short story, The Tiger's Pride. In her story, Kato reveals such kind of female cyborg through her heroine by placing her in self-rediscovering process. At first, her being can be symbolized in terms of objectification and automaton as oppressed cyborg, hybrid subjects from human and machine. Then, she shifts to be a beautiful tigress. The process between these two can reveal her liberated cyborg, hybrid subject between animal and human. Well... Kadok's heroine is revealed as an object, an automaton, by the use of mechanical doll. With rosy cheeks, little cap, and her white stockings. Her female cyborg subjectivity as hybrid human machine is controlled by her patriarchal gender role for women as passive, weak, and autonomous object. Moreover, the doll and the mechanical maid carries a look in a glass in one hand, which refers to her need for her sense of being an identity, just as the heroine's needs to a defined identity and subjectivity that are neglected by patriarchy, according to Da Silva. Also, on the other hand, she carries a powder puff which refers to the construction of femininity, as Da Silva puts it. And the heroine's femininity is socially constructed by patriarchy as an object. So the mechanical performance of the maid indicates that the subjectivity of women is denied. Thus, the heroine's female subjectivity as a woman is deconstructed through her cyborg subjectivity as hybrid between human machine. Thus, the heroine is a product of exchange for both her father and the beast. Consequently, the heroine shows passive hybrid subjectivity by having a human body but an automaton personality as she is treated like her maid which has no choice but to play the role of women restricted to the violent gender norms of patriarchy so here Carter uses the mechanical doll to indicate that the female is invented by the patriarchal society and is socially constructed, as the Silva puts it.
After that, the heroin subjectivity is changed to be a cyborg that hybrid between human and animal. And this can be revealed in the beast managing when she starts to discover her animalistic nature and her subjectivity born. The valet took the mirror away from me, put done it, polished it with the hum of his gloves fits, handed it back to me. Now all I saw was myself, Huckard. So recognizing herself in the mirror indicates that she begins to be free from the patriarchal role as mechanical doll, an object to reconstruct her subjectivity. Finally, in terms of resistance and rejection to the patriarchal oppressive gender and sexist norms, she decides to be tigress. This happens when the beast unveiled himself to the heroine by taking off his mask and clothes, which indicates, according to De Silva, that the liberty from fantasy of humanity is celebrated. In this moment, the heroine is not afraid from her animalistic nature, but from her human appearance which is defeated by her transformation to be a tigress when she has said that the beast will lick the skin of me. I shrugged the drops of my beautiful fur. So the post gender here it gives the heroine power as her way defined the cyborg to be able to enhance women empowerment and liberty from the aggressiveness of patriarchal norms. In conclusion, there are three points of conclusions. Number one, gender identity and the cyborg. Answering the paper's question, what does it mean to be male or female in a world in which body parts are interchangeable? According to the cyborg, the representation of gender identity can be de or reconstructed through the interaction between culture, technology, and male or female identity. Number two, the male cyborg can be represented by the protagonist of Fayek comedian movie LMB8 Giga, while number three, the female cyborg can be represented by Carter's protagonist or heroine in her short story, The Tiger's Pride. For further reading, you can tackle these resources. And thank you very much for your listening.